Hey everybody and welcome to another JASP tutorial. In this tutorial, I want to go through the updated descriptives module. Yeah, this descriptives module up here. I want to go over um, what has changed since the last time I went through that. Now, when I first did uh, an updated video, it was like in 2021 and it was JASP uh, 0.15. We are already in 0.16.4. So it's been a while and it has changed. So if you want to go check, take a look at um, edit the uh, editing plots. They've had that out for like over a year now. And um, the new descriptive features, they have changed somewhat already. So I'm going to do that video now so we can um, we can go explore because I spent a lot more time in that video, episode 33, um, talking about the plot editing because that was the bigger feature, of course. But the, and, and I spent a little bit of time talking about the new customizable plots, but even that has changed since 0 0.15 build. So we're going to go ahead and jump in to some data so we can talk about the customizable plots feature of the descriptives module. So let's jump into that. So Data I'm thinking of opening here is from the data library, which comes with every JASP install. And I'm going to go to descriptives and I'm just going to open up the sleep data. And so we have extra amount of sleep. And so minuses mean no extra amount of sleep. And then positives mean extra amount of sleep. Um, and you can get the uh, description of the data by uh, going to data library, going to descriptives. The number of additional hours that each of the 10 patients slept after having been administered to soporific drugs, which are sleeping pills. All right. So what do they do? Do they make you go? Do they make you go to sleep or do they? Um, not make you go to sleep. And so we've got two two groups here. Uh, group one got one kind of soporific drug and group two got another kind of soporific drug. And you can see just by looking at these values that probably drug number two uh, makes people sleep a little bit longer than drug number one. But I don't really care about that. Uh, we'll find out what the descriptives are in just a second because uh, we're not doing a t-test or anything like that. We're going to do descriptive statistics. So I'm going to open up the descriptives module and everything is self-contained within this module. You can open up the uh, JASP help file again. This is just by clicking the blue eye button here and it tells you all of the things. It tells you all of the things, but I don't need that because honestly, we're just going to uh, go through them all. All right. So I'm just going to use the extra uh, uh, variable here to get us going, right? So by default, we get our missing, valid missing, our mean, our standard deviation, and the maximum and the minimum. So let's go through this. So let's get our statistics, okay? Um, again, that's what we get. We get the median, the mode. We can get our quart quartiles, okay? Uh, we can get our cut points. I don't really, that doesn't really matter. Excuse us. Cortosis, superior woke tests to see whether or not it is um, um, normal, normally distributed. We can transpose the descriptives table and it'll give us a really long, I like this better. However, if you're clicking all of these buttons, you might not want that to be long. You might just want it to be, uh, you know, deep or long ways up and down as opposed to long ways right and left so you don't have to scroll. I mean, I've got a pretty decent sized monitor here at 1080p for you all. And even then I had to scroll, but it does make it easier to read variables on rows, uh, statistics on columns. Just make it easier to read. Just, just throwing that out there. Dispersion. We already had standard deviation. I'll go ahead and get standard error. We can get coefficient variance in there. We can get the range. We can get the quartile range. All of these amazing descriptives all in one place. That's lovely. Let's collapse that so we can get that. We can get our basic plots. We can get our distribution plot, right? Which will give us uh, the histogram for this. And we can also display the density on there and it'll show us that. Um, and bin width type is we can use Sturges, which is the most common bin width type. We can use Scott, which will be a, a little bit wider of a bin width. Doan, which is a little bit less wider. We can use Friedman Diaconus, which is quite large bins. And then we can do manual, which gives you the ability to put in whatever value you want. So how many bins you want. So we'll go Sturges because that's the default. And that's generally how we can do this. Correlation plots, I'm not going to show anything because we don't have more than one variable in here. So just be aware of that. We can get uh, Pareto plots. Oh, that's, yeah, that's categorical. Oh, no, it's not a categorical. Categorical. <laughs> variable. So we're not going to get any of these, but that's okay. Uh, interval plots, uh, QQ, pew, pew, pie charts, dot plots. Okay, so there's the interval plot. There's the QQ plot. Uh, it's pretty normal. Uh, let's see, what was our Shapiro Wilk? Uh, 0.946. Not bad. Yeah, pretty, pretty normal. Here's our uh, interval plot. Okay. And then here is the um, dot plot, which is basically a put all of the values on a number line. It's pretty much it's pretty, it's a, it's essentially a dot histogram, uh, a dot plots, but eh, it's not as good, not as good, not as good as what I want to do here. Not as good as what I want to do here. Customizable plots. So in my previous video, um, customizable plots were part of the plots drop down, the, the drops collapsible menu here in, in, in point, uh, in, in 0 0.16, they were separated out and I just haven't gotten around to it, but look at all of this lovely, amazing, um, stuff that we can do in customizable plots. And, um, you can change your color palette. You can make it colorblind. You can make it colorblind alt veritas GG plot two, or just gray in general, right? Gray scale. Um, so colorblind, colorblind alt, uh, removes reds and greens. Um, so if you have those in there, uh, so if you are, uh, uh, red, green, colorblind, then, um, these, the, the colors that they use, uh, that Jasper will use to color the different plots will, um, not use, uh, reds and greens. So that's cool. We'll take a look at, we'll, we'll use that one here. So we can get block, box plots, okay? Uh, let's see, where does that add that there? Where's my box plot? There it is. 
So here we have that there. Okay. So colorblind, colorblind, alt. I wonder if that changes. Must not change the box plot. And that's all right. We'll go back to. So we can get violin, right? Which will give us a violin element here. Uh, on the, so violin element, if you're not familiar with what a violin plot is, it's essentially a box plot that uh, includes density. So around where your means and medians are. Um, we can give put the jitter on this box plot as well. Oh, here we go. Here's color palette. Oh, colorblind uses a green. Lovely. <laughs> colorblind alt makes it black. Don't use that. Viridis. Let's, uh, let's see what here. Purple. Oof, that is hard to read. GG plot two. I do love my GG plots uh, because it uses these oranges and, and, and greens, which are uh, lovely. And then just grayscale which is what we had on by default. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, label outliers, right? So if you have the violin element, it sort of hides the, the uh, box plot in a way. I just did get rid of the violin element. Come on, come on, you can do it. There we go. Um, and then we have the jitter element for the dots. Of course, these dots are all on this line. They're just jittered from that vertical line so you can see where they all, so just in case any of them overlap like this, like so, right? We can also put on scatter plots. So, uh, where's my scatter? Oh, I need two variables for scatter. That's right. Um, let's go ahead and put group in here. It's not gonna be a very good scatter plot. I'll tell you what. Um, yeah, there's group, group density. Whoa, whoa, it's scrolling here. There we go. Ah, we've got pie charts. We've got the ability for pie charts. We got the ability. Oh, we've got all of them. Look at the pie charts. Uh, <laughs> so here's the scatter plot. Okay. Um, and so a group is, you can see it's bimodal, obviously, because there are two groups. <laughs> and then here we have the uh, distribution for that. So uh, it tells you what you want to do. You can either use the density on the top and the, uh, the top and the side, or you can use the histogram. And it's going to change this, okay, to the histogram, okay. Um, and you can change it for this one as well. And it'll be, again, it'll be two, two dots, one and two. Amazing, right? There's not really anything. I mean, you shouldn't do this. This should be a scatter plot between two continuous variables. But I don't have the data open, so you can kind of see. And then the um, line here is smooth, or we can make it linear. And the shading here is the confidence interval. Um, and you can either have that in there and can see it looks like a bow tie because that's how confidence intervals work away from the mean. But I can also get rid of that if I want to. Um, you can see that there is a positive correlation between what group you're in and how much extra sleep you got. Spoiler alert, group two, the, the value between group one and group two doesn't exist. But group two had better sleep, got more extra sleep. So, you know, there you go. You know, uh, or you can have none. You don't have to have these at all if you don't want to. Uh, you can get rid of them and have a classic scatter plot. Amazing. Look at that. It's lovely. Okay. Um, ooh, uh, let's change the color palette to GG plot because I want to see what changes in each of these plots. Yeah, see, this is these are my two favorite colors. I'm, I'm so happy the creator of GG plot two use these two colors because they are dynamically uh, opposed to each other. Um, I don't know if necessarily like that, but um, and here um, I don't think colors are useful in here. But in any case, that's what we got there. Um, all right. Next, we have density plots. You have to use um, separate densities, but of course, I'm not going to use ID as a density plot, but you can use density plots here. Tile heat maps for selected variables. Where am I? Why are my variables not in there? That's weird. Um, and so you can have them display on a horizontal or vertical axis. Display the legend. Display the values with the height ratio of tiles for the heat map. Really great. Um, and then statistic uh, for these tiled heat maps. And you can see these are indented. So that all of these options for are for the tile heat maps. So you can use mean, median, the value, so the observed value itself, or how many observations for that value. And then for nominal or ordinal variables, you can use the mode, the value, or the number of observations, which is again really amazing. But here's the most amazing part. Um, we can click on this and go to edit image. Um, multiple, the plot cannot be edited because it consists of multiple smaller figures. Which ones can I edit then? Can I edit this one? Yes, there we go. So we can edit this one if we'd like and change the y-axis. We can change steps to be one. I have a whole video on how this works. Okay, it takes a second, but here you go. And you can, so you can make that a little bit better. The x-axis isn't really going to change because there's not much to change. You can parse the title as an R expression if you're going to take this into R. Um, but I'm going to hit OK, and then look at that. It changed. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, I think that's all I wanted to talk about here. Um, I want to get the tile heat maps, though. Okay, so I, I went ahead and I took group out of the variables here. I don't know why you can't do that, why you can't have group in the split or the variables. But when you do that, it, it brings it down here, and you click on display density plot and uh, you can do that and you separate densities uh, and so these are the densities of the two distributions group one is over here and group two is over here and the transparency value allows you to see the overlap there um and then uh well let's do group and the horizontal axis for the heat map and id is a vertical axis i don't know that's that's dumb um let's see is it going to display that i don't know oh there's the heat map all right okay so display legend let's see what happens with this 
value. Okay, so uh, yes, this is good. This is good. So for each person, you have the the heat map. For each person, it tells you the value of or and then we can in the square we can display the value. So we can quickly use this to see how much better how much better uh, each person in each group was. Right? They don't correspond to one another. So like this ID one in group one and group two is is uh, just sort of corresponds with the first value in the group versus the second value in the group. So it's not like we're comparing anything, but we can see that we have more, uh, we have stronger values here for that. And we can, you know, we can do this for other variables too, but I sort of like how this is working. Um, relative text size is uh, text size one. Let's see what happens when we change that to five. What happens here? Oh, definitely not. No, 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 no. One is, uh, let's see, what can we get? Point, can we put 0.5 in here? Relative text size 0.5. I think that's interpreted as one. Let's see, 0.25. Mm, I don't think they're getting smaller. So I think, Oh, no, 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 they did just get smaller. Okay, it's just taking my computer a uh, uh, chance to catch up. Okay, so let's do 0.5. So half the size. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. That's beautiful. So we can see that for each of these 10 people, uh, 10 people per group, that um, we have higher values in group two. And of course, that's going to uh, aid in our null hypothesis statistical testing between these two groups and stuff like that. With the height ratio of tiles is one. Uh, so that is the, their one-to-one -one squares. How about we make them two? Let's see what happens when we make them two. Yeah, that's going to... Change them. Okay. All right. So the they get wider. So that's a little bit nicer. We can make our text size a little bit bigger if we wanted to, or we get a little space. This is this is wonderful. Um, for scale variables. Um, so these are the these are the values. Uh, so the the value itself. What is changes here? Yeah, yeah. So mode and value itself are gonna be the exact same because there's only one value per right. Because I'm using ID as as the variable. So it's only number of observations. So if I click on number of observations, which what changes? Nothing. Okay. So none of these don't change because I'm using ID. And so these are single measurements for each of these people. So that tells you uh, using this legend for the heat map. Um, <laughs> so these must be GG plot values. So let's change this to colorblind and see what happens to these colors. Yeah, interesting. Okay. These are interesting colorblind values. Uh, colorblind alt, what changes here? Hmm. Okay. Quite a bit more variability on this one, but I get it. Um, oranges and pinks a little bit higher. You, you can't even read what's going on there because it's so negative. Um, Viridus, what does this look like here? Viridus, okay, so these, this is the, the color changes that you see in a lot of papers. I, I see this Viridus scale quite a bit, and it's purple and yellow. Purple and yellow, see, purple, yes. So I see, you see Viridus a lot for these heat maps. And then gray, what is the, uh, gray, okay, so lighter values do, uh, the gray scale does work for this heat map, so the darker the value of gray, it sort of impacts this being a black number. But yeah, this kind of works here. I like that. I'm glad we. I'm glad I figured out how to how to do that. Um, in this, this is pre that's pretty cool. Uh, so anyways, that's the customizable plots in the descriptives module in JASP. If you as of as of zero point one six point four, I'm hoping that these these plot modules get better and better and better. You don't even have to open ggplot to get an amazing looking figure. Fingers crossed for JASP users, and I'd love to see more of this in. Jamovi too. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or feedback, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.